Hey there, so some of you might know this motor. Um, it's always sitting down here and I recently came across a few videos talking about these kinds of motors and motors in general and how to wire them up. <clears throat> and as this one is rather uh, flexible in wiring, um, yeah, I did some more investigation about um, how to wire motors and I did some things with the wiring and some experimenting. Um, <clears throat> originally the first project for this channel should have been a motor control for this because you have this taco meter thing here which is um, a few coils in here or maybe just one on top and a a, uh, a round magnet with several fields I guess uh, several poles, I mean, um, <clears throat> it's just rotating with the uh, anchor and generating a signal here that you can then use to um, to count the pulses and hence get the RPMs of the motor. Okay, so <clears throat> now this motor is built as follows. Um, you have two coils. Um, that is stator coils, I think, or field field weddings. So you have two. They have um, they're connected in series. Then you have um, and you have three wires. So you have a center tab and two at the end. <coughs> so you can't completely separate uh, separate those. I mean, I mean, you could. You could just open up the motor and do some soldering. Um, but yeah, so they're in series, which is um, this one. The lower one is uh, for the field, which is uh, yeah these two wires here. That is light green and brown, and I think orange is the center tab. <coughs> yeah, the two whites are just the thermal probe, um, and these two are the brushes, so the anchor, and now wired it up for DC, which means I have a constant uh, voltage, current, whatever, a constant power flowing through the field windings, and I can vary the speed with the voltage for uh, the anchor. <coughs> Do you even call it anchor in English? I don't know. Um, armature, I think armature is the word that I'm searching for, but yeah, the thing in the middle. That thing that turns. <clears throat> so I experimented a bit with voltages and currents and so forth, uh, so forth, um, and I made some uh, discoveries. So first thing we're gonna go do the, the the shitty thing, which is we're gonna use a rather low uh, half a volt. Um, can you even see this on the camera here? Yeah, half a volt. And 250 milliamps, that means we're at uh, like, I don't know, <laughs> 0 0.15 uh, watts or something in the stator coil. Stator, stator coil, yeah. Um, <clears throat> the thing is that when wiring these things that... Um, The faster this thing turns, that there is like a growing magnetic field that's I think called back EMF, um, which is basically acting in the opposite direction of the magnetic field that's turning it in its direction. And at some point, this uh, these two are equal, and uh, <coughs> so the thing comes to a constant speed. But with 0.5 volts, I made a rather interesting discovery, um, and I'm going to show it to you. Maybe you remember how fast it was running with like 100 volts AC on in the universal motor wiring that I had. So which means, I think it was armature and field windings in series is I think the universal wiring. Uh, and yeah, it ran really fast, had no constant speed, um, and this with 0.5, uh, 0.5 volts on here 
is kind of similar. I'm gonna just start it up at 30 volts and you're gonna see it or hear it. Yep. So you can see it's going in super fast, but it takes a long time to get up to that speed and it isn't really, if you put load on it, it's just gonna go down like it used to be with um, just the universal motor wiring. So if you now move that voltage up to 5 volts on the field, which is uh, like 14 watts now. We're gonna just, we didn't change anything up here, still 30 volts. <clears throat> you see, no high speed anymore, but rather constant, and it was up there really quick. And when I block it, it doesn't really go down. And ouchie, I'm <laughs> gonna use this here. Yeah, I can't really stop it. While if I also if I now change the voltage here <coughs> to 0.5 again, and you see when I block it now, goes down. <coughs> and if I now increase the voltage to 5 volts again, you're hearing it breaking itself basically uh, down to this speed. And it of course takes a lot of uh, energy, so we have like 14 watts here, and here we have, uh, that's like 3 times 3, is that 10 watts? I think let's, it's like 10 watts up here, okay. So let's go down in, in uh, voltage again. You can hear it, if I decrease it, it's going up in speed. Um, <coughs> So if I go down to 0.5 again, we can see we are now at, well that's like maybe 40, 45 watts plus that bit down here. But if we go up in voltage here, <laughs> yeah I, I fucked that up. Um, I should do that again to show you because the whole thing rocked itself because it <laughs> broke so hard. Um, so I'm just gonna increase the voltage drastically. Do you see it jump? Um, so if I now, that's also something I discovered, if I now just turn off the field Usually, if it's open circuit, nothing should happen, so if I disconnect these, nothing is happening, but if I just turn it off, it's suddenly going, yeah, up in speed again. Oh my god, oh my god, that shocked me, that, that was not what I wanted to do, <laughs> but yeah, it um, jumped again, because it went down from the high speed. Uh, to the low speed. Oh my god, I shouldn't play too much with this and not kill myself. Uh, I actually inc uh, switched it back on again because I, I actually wanted to switch this one off. Um, because uh, when I was discovering this, that it would be just turning. Um, so let's decrease maybe the voltage here. <coughs> you see, we still have a constant uh, and high torque. Ouch. Um, <coughs> high torque movement, but constant speed. <coughs> um, this is the, the highest I can go on the field because I can't do more than 40 watts uh, here because of the low resistance of the field. Um, <coughs> yeah, if I just disconnect this, it should just stop. And it does. This is the anchor. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. No, I wanted to actually disconnect this one, but there's going to be some sparks. So I, can, I don't know. Can you see this camera? Yeah, you can see it. Okay. Ooh, this is hot. 
Ooh. That was bright. <clears throat> okay, so for some reason it's still going. <laughs> and it's pulling a lot of power. How is that still going? Okay, let's switch this one off. Let's see. Hmm, that, that's strange. Usually if it just put a, a power into the armature, nothing should happen. Because there, is, there should be no magnetic field. Let's see, let's just turn it off. And there we go. Let's go back to 20 volts here. On. Wait. On. Yeah, nothing happens. Ah. Just a tiny bit. <coughs> but yeah, this is now using 45 watts or more. Actually, the, the resistance seems to go down with speed. <laughs> So less current needed. Let's see. Hmm. And now 20 volts. But yeah, you see this is horribly inefficient. So... <clears throat> um, the point of this whole video is to show you that Driving it in DC is eliminating a component um, of the equation that I uh, usually was struggling with, and that was speed control. Because if I just um, just use uh, well five volts on the um, on the field windings, I can't just control the speed with uh, the constant speed with voltage uh, or probably a PWM controlling the armature um, <clears throat> which means I do not have to react to this I do not need a PID controller I can sadly not work well maybe I actually could try this I, I should try that now I'm gonna switch this up I'm gonna put AC on the armature but actually then I still need yeah, I think no. <laughs> yeah, there, there was another problem with using a triac because I had to do uh, <clears throat> had to time the switchings right, and I think that's that's gonna be hard. So I think I will just try to use the big MOSFETs again um, and just use PWM rectified mains, 340 volts, uh, to drive the motor, even if it just says here 230 volts, 50 hertz. But yeah, in what configuration? <coughs> um, yeah, I think I also tried it in shunt winding, which means this is going in parallel to the brushes. Um, so the voltage of the field would go up with the voltage of this thing, which kind of worked, but pulled a lot of amps because of the low resistance of, uh, of the field of windings. Um, <clears throat> and it will probably just melt the motor at some point so I'm gonna keep the field at a low voltage like 5 volts maybe more depending on what speed I want because as you maybe saw increasing the speed of the field writings decreases increasing the speed of the voltage uh, yeah in no come on decreasing no increasing the voltage of the field windings something fell down um, increasing the voltage of the field windings slows down the speed, increases torque, <clears throat> and we need some torque. Torque is good. At least I don't know if it if it just slows down the speed because you're building up this back EMF thing, the electromagnetic field. By the way, for those that do not know what EMF means, yeah. So <clears throat> I'm gonna go back to DC, and I have to figure out how to drive this thing with a MOSFET or actually two MOSFETs because maybe I want to vary the, the voltage of the field too <coughs> but I'm, I guess I'm just gonna put it on 5 volts the problem with this is if I just connect this back up can you, can you see this? everything's off yeah 
No more surprises, please. I hate surprises. Uh, no more flash. And voltage, not 32 volts. Well, it, it, it's just gonna go up to 8 because uh, of the current limiting. Um, 5 volts. <coughs> which is almost 3 amps. Which is on, on just. Switching this on, yeah, it's staying constant. And even with load, it's just, it's not changing. Just the top one. See, just the top is changing. Uh, the field is staying for some reason. Um, <coughs> but yeah, which is good, but still, I would need a 3 amp power supply for 5 volts. And I do not have that. Um, at least not as a small brick. Um, what I do have though is the thing down here, which I recently well, kind of finished if and I already put things on top of it. Um, <coughs> let's switch off the motor again. Um, yeah. This thing, which is just a normal ATX power supply, I guess it's ATX. Um, with all the voltages here, which is um, 12, minus 12, 5, 3.3 .3 and standby 5, which means this is always on if you plug it in and the rest is switched on if you put the switch in the right position, which is not marked, which is great, but yeah, it's not high voltage, so it doesn't matter if, it, if you plug it in and it suddenly goes on. <coughs> um, but yeah, this is just something I made or finished recently because I finally got around to gluing this thing on here. This is just held with glue, this this front part. And it's probably gonna come off at some point. I'm gonna get really mad at it. But it feels rather stable at the moment. I made some holes in the case and put the screws in the di right direction. I couldn't put these further back because there there was a um, a thing. A capacitor in the way so yeah I had to put these up here and uh, these holes are here because there are screws like this under here so I can still take off the outer casing without having to well rip off this piece of wood so yeah I might use these five volts because let's look at the thing on the side well, lucky you you don't have to turn your oh you have to turn your head oh my um, 5 volts, 400 watts, 30 amps, uh, it says here. So we have 30 amps of 5 volts, we have 15 amps of 12 volts, minus 5, which is, well, not even connected, um, is 0.3 amps, minus 12 is 0.8 amps, 5 volts standby, 2 amps. We could almost use the standby, <laughs> but yeah. Exactly, 3.328 amps, but we don't need that yet. But we could still use it to drive this, or well, we're probably going to use it to drive this with 5 volts, because this is a 5 volt one. The Pro Minis are 3 volts that I have, but I use those for different projects which have a low power requirement. <coughs> and this one does not have that. So yeah, I'm... Well, at least for prototyping, I'm going to use this. I might just, if I ever finish a whole control, I'm just going to uh, take one of these smaller ones because, I mean, I don't need that much power. I just need 3 amps of 5 volts and that's it. And the rest is going to be, uh, well, coming directly from the line for this one. <coughs> and it's going to be super scary and expensive if something fails. Well, not expensive. These are broken. Well, not broken. Old. They're just old. And, well, if I break an Arduino, but still, if someone touches the wrong part of the whole thing, they're gonna die. Yay! <clears throat> well, I mean, who would touch it? <laughs> who would touch the, the bad things? Just don't get near it if I build it. Basically, yeah, this is what I have planned for this in the distant future, because I don't know when I will have enough time to actually do all these things. Because writing software is annoying, building hardware is annoying, and yeah, my motivation isn't that much. And I still have to use my motivation for work and other things in the house, like cor cores, uh, 
like yeah cleaning up behind other people you know the drill <coughs> or not maybe you're the person that has to be cleaned up after but yeah that's the, the whole point of this video I now know how to uh, drive this with constant speed I didn't know that there was such things as back EMF and you could just do different wiring and suddenly it does constant speed even with DC I just figured from school no one ever taught us this that there may be different things uh, for wiring a motor what we got taught is either you have a universal motor which can be driven by AC and DC which was the wiring I had before which just sped up uh, into oblivion and then you had DC motors which has had the same thing basically and um, and magnets as a stator field like this one <coughs> yeah this one is broken by the way uh, this came from a huh, yeah I don't know what the name of that thing is but you hold it like this and it has a, a spinning blade further down and you can just uh, mash potatoes or whatever with it um, <clears throat> but yeah this came from such a one and it got increasingly hot when you were working with it and yeah now testing it I think all of the windings just don't make any contact anymore and I don't know why like some I think two or three still had contact there's like several on the commutator um, at the at first I was just running it with 30 volts so no over voltage or over power on it um, <clears throat> so it was running really really rough um, and then suddenly it stopped so now nothing makes contact anymore and I don't know why like <laughs> I couldn't find any burn marks on the stator I actually can't just disassemble this for you because I already yeah come out okay it's not coming out Come on, there we go. <clears throat> okay, front off. All these things off and on here. The important thing here. And there's a lot of shit. I forgot to take the brushes out before I do that. Well, <clears throat> there you go. <laughs> One disassembled motor. Okay, here's the stator. Not stator, uh, the, the armature. So yeah, you see it's, it's rather black back here, but... I don't know if you see it or if it's just blurry because the camera can't focus. Let me check the camera. Yeah, it should be okay. Should be. The stuff back here is way more focused, but yeah. Um, yeah, I don't see any obvious burn marks on the wiring, like here on the front or on the back. It just does not make contact anymore. I had the suspicion that it's maybe this part where it actually connects the. The commutator to the wires but well those look fine too it just doesn't work anymore and I am fairly confident that the brushes didn't just randomly stop conducting electricity um, so yeah that's this broken motor for you this one is a DC motor actually even says that on the casing because ah, things uh, you see there's permanent magnets in here <clears throat> so you can only drive this with DC so the driving electronic um, hat here yeah, it says DC 230 volts and the driving electronics had to be some kind of DC power supply and I took it apart and it was yeah rather small <laughs> so this was a how many watts a lot of watts for such a tiny motor uh, machine <clears throat> but yeah that's just to show you what a DC motor looks like and that's basically what we learned in school nothing more only these two variants that things like back EMF existed or you could do more things with the motor than this what well, we also learned later on about the three phase motors which had constant speed and they were super great but yeah, no one told us that you could do the same thing with a DC motor and how do you call it externally externally excited field yeah 
which basically means you drive the field with a different power supply than the armature. <coughs> okay, that's it for today. And yeah, you will see me whenever I have time to do any of my projects again, which is going to be in the distant future, I guess. <laughs> Or if I find something interesting, I'm going to take apart this, maybe I'm going to make a video of this. Uh, this is just an old radio and yeah. Well, it does have batteries uh, or is able to live off batteries, but... Well, you can get these things in much smaller packages nowadays and <laughs> I'm in the basement, I don't really need a radio. And actually my phone <laughs> can do radio, so why the fuck would I need this? <clears throat> Maybe I can use some of the components. But yeah, that's it for today. Bye-bye.